Chapter 4. Lockenet Corporation. The history of Lockenet Corporation is best described from its own literature. An outdated letter of introduction typed on Lockenet letterhead once sent to prospective clients provided me with the following profile, excerpted, Lockenet Corporation had its beginnings in 1954, when George R. Lockenet and three other former special agents of the Federal Bureau of Investigation formed a company in Miami, Special Agent Investigators, to provide investigative services to business and industry. The approach was so well received that a second company was formed in 1955 to apply the same philosophy to physical security problems. In 1958 the companies were combined under the name of Lockenet Corporation, a Florida company. From the outset, George Lockenet was president and chief executive officer of the enterprise. Lockenet established its headquarters in Coral Gables, Florida in 1960 extending its physical security opera TIONS to the United States government through formation of a wholly owned subsidiary, Lockenet Services, Inc. This was done in order to comply with federal statute prohibiting the government from contracting with companies which furnish investigative or detective services. In 1962, Lockenet operations extended from Florida to California and Hawaii. On January 1, 1966, the company became international with offices in Caracas, Venezuela, through half-ownership of an affiliate. The Lockenet Corporation became public in 1966 with over-the-counter stock sales and joined the American Stock Exchange in 1967. Through acquisitions of subsidiaries and affiliates, now totaling more than 20, and expansion of its contracts into numerous territories and foreign countries, the Lockenet Corporation has grown into one of the world's largest security and investigative firms. In 1978 acquisition of NUSAC, a Virginia company providing technical and consulting services to the nuclear industry, brought Lockenet into the fields of environment and energy management. In 1979, Lockenet acquired Stellar Systems, Inc., a California company specializing in outdoor electronic security. The executive makeup of the company reflects the stress Mr. Lockenet placed on professional leadership. The Lockenet Corporation is guided by executives and managers with extensive backgrounds in the FBI and other military, governmental and private security and investigative fields. The principal business of the company is furnishing security and complete investigative services and systems to business, industry and professional clients, and to various agencies of the U.S government. Through a wholly owned subsidiary, Lockenet Electronic Systems Corporation, the company develops and produces sophisticated computerized security systems to complement its guard services. Major clients of Lockenet Investigative Services are the insurance industry and financial interests. These services include insurance inspections, corporate acquisition surveys, personnel background reports, pre-employment screening, polygraph examinations and general criminal, fraud and some investigations. The wide variety of services offered by Wachenet Corporation also includes guard and electronic security for banks, office buildings, apartments, industrial complexes and other physical structures. Training programs in English and foreign languages to apply Wachenet procedures to individual clients' needs. Fire, safety and protective patrols. Rescue and first aid services. Emergency support programs tailored to labor management disputes, and pre departure screening programs widely used by airports and airlines. The company now has some 20,000 employees and maintains close to 100 offices and facilities with operations spread across the United States and extending into Canada, the United Kingdom, Western Europe, the Middle East, Indonesia, Central and South America, and the Caribbean. On the surface, Lockenet Corporation seemed innocuous enough, but through documents I later obtained, I learned there was another, darker side to Lockenet operations at the Cabazon Indian Reservation. Because Indian reservations are sovereign nations and do not come under federal jurisdiction, Lockenet International had formed a partnership and entered into a joint business venture with the Cabazon Indians to produce high tech arms and explosives for export to third world countries. This maneuver was designed to evade congressional prohibitions against U.S. weapons being shipped to the Contras and Middle Eastern countries. In the early 1980s, 
Dr. John Nichols, the Cabazon Tribal Administrator, obtained a Department of Defense secret facility clearance for the reservation to conduct various research projects. Nichols then approached Lockenet with an elaborate joint venture proposal to manufacture 120 mm combustible cartridge cases, 9 mm machine pistols, laser sighted assault weapons, sniper rifles, and portable rocket systems on the Cabazon Reservation and in Latin America. At one point, he even sought to develop biological weapons. I later obtained inter office memorandums and correspondence relating to biological technology but more on that in a future chapter. Meanwhile, in 1980, Dr. John Nichols obtained the blueprints to Crown Prince Fahd's palace in Tief, Saudi Arabia, and drafted a plan to provide security for the palace. The Saudis were interested enough to conduct a background check on the Kabazans. Mohammed Jamil Hashem, consul of the Royal Embassy of Saudi Arabia in Washington, D.C., wrote former South Dakota Senator James Abores cut his offices in Washington, D.C. and noted, according to our blacklist for companies, the Cabazan Band of Mission Indians Cabazan Trading Company and Wakenet International are not included. Translated, that meant that neither the Cabazans or Wakenet were Jewish-run enterprises. George Wakenet's political leanings were once described in a book entitled, The Age of Surveillance, the Aims and Methods of America's Political Intelligence System, by Frank J. Dunner, Knopf, 1980, pages 424 to 425. As such, the agencies, Wachenet Professional Concerns reflect the political values of its director, George Wachenet. A writist of the old blood, he selected as his directors an assortment of ultras prominent in the John Birch Society, the ASC, and other right wing groups. The agency's monthly house organ, the Wachenet Security Review, systematically decried the subversive inspiration in virtually all the protest movements of the 60s, from civil rights to peace. This vigilance earned the publication the accolade of right-wing organizations, including, in 1962, the George Washington Honor Medal and the Freedom Foundation Award at Valley Forge, Pennsylvania. And, in 1965 and 1966, the Vigilant Patriots Award from the All-American Conference to Combat Communism. Of all the articles written about Wachenet Corporation, probably the most provocative was written by John Connolly for Spy Magazine, published in September 1992, pages 46 to 54. Connolly, a former New York police officer turned writer, began his story with the following introduction, what? A big private company, one with a board of former CIA, FBI and Pentagon officials. One in charge of protecting nuclear weapons facilities, nuclear reactors, the Alaskan oil pipeline and more than a dozen American embassies abroad. One with long-standing ties to a radical right-wing organization. One with 30,000 men and women under arms, secretly helped Iraq in its effort to obtain sophisticated weapons. And fueled unrest in Venezuela. This is all the plot of a new best-selling thriller, right? Or the ravings of some overheated conspiracy buff, right? Right? Wrong. Connolly highlighted George Wachenet as a hardline right-winger who was able to profit from his beliefs by building dossiers on Americans suspected of being communists or left-leaning subversives and sympathizers and selling the information to interested parties. By 1965, Lockenet was boasting to potential investors that the company maintained files on 2.5 million suspected dissidents, one in 46 American adults then living. In 1966, after acquiring the private files of Carl Barslog, a former staff member of the House Committee on Un-American Activities, Lockenet could confidently maintain that with more than 4 million names, it had the largest privately held file on suspected dissidents in America. Connolly wrote that it was not possible to overstate the special relationship that Lockenet enjoys with the federal government. Richard Babayan, claiming to be a CIA contract employee, told Spy that Lockenet has been used by the CIA and other intelligence agencies for years. When they, the CIA, need cover, Lockenet is there to provide it for them. Another CIA agent, Bruce Berkmans, who was assigned to the CIA station in Mexico City, but left the agency in January 1975, putatively, to become a Wachenet International Operations Vice President, 
told Speer that he had seen a formal proposal submitted by George Wachenner to the CIA offering WAC Ennett offices throughout the world as funds for CIA activities. In 1981, Berkman's joined with other senior Wachenet executives to form the company's Special Projects Division. It was this division that linked up with ex-CIA man Dr. John Philip Nichols, the Cabazon tribal administrator, in pursuit of a scheme to manufacture explosives, poison gas and biological weapons for export to the Contras and other communist fighting rebels worldwide. Spy also printed testimony from William Corbett, a terrorism expert who spent 18 years as a CIA analyst and is now an ABC News consultant in Europe. Said Corbett, for years while Kennett has been involved with the CIA and other intelligence organizations, including the DEA, while Kennett would allow the CIA to occupy positions within the company, in order to carry out clandestine operations. Additionally, Corbett said that Wachenet supplied intelligence agencies with information, and it was compensated for this, in a quid pro quo arrangement, with government contracts worth billions of dollars over the years. On page 51, in a box entitled, Current and Former Wachenet Directors, Spy published the following names, John Amaral, former FBI agent. Robert Chazen, former FBI agent. Clarence Kelly, former FBI director. Willis Hawkins, former Assistant Secretary of the Army. Paul X. Kelly, four-star general, Ret. U.S. Marine Corps. Seth McKee, former Commander-in-Chief, North American Air Defense Command. Bernard Schwer, former member, President's Foreign Intelligence Advisory Board. Frank Carlucci, former Defense Secretary and former Deputy CIA Director. Joseph Carroll, Former Director, Defense Intelligence Agency. James Rawley, Former Director, U.S. Secret Service. Bobby Ray Inman, Former Deputy CIA Director.